All right, Simon, uh, welcome to uh, Rista Talk, which is a new thing I've started um, to help us get the uh, flow of communication happening. Um, sure. Thanks for giving me your time. Uh, I've got Simon Mitchell here from Southern Goal, all the way from Adelaide. Um, Simon, um, maybe just intro yourself and let's go. Sure. So I'm the Managing Director of Southern Gold, uh, a, a geologist by background, but I've spent a lot of time in finance. So I'm a bit of a, a hybrid uh, corporate geologist, if you will, uh, running a company with uh, gold exploration interests in South Korea. So, um, Simon, I mean, it's challenging time for everybody. Um, that's an understatement. And I think we're oversaturated with all the uh, bad news. Uh, how yeah. are you guys, um, managing through the muddy waters and give us some good news, I guess? Yeah, well, look, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because a few weeks ago, South Korea was a bit of a pariah state. You know, no one wanted to go there and everyone was worried about South Korea. Uh, but, but now uh, it's seen as one of the countries that's done actually very well in the crisis and managed it uh, probably better than many. Uh, and we've noticed that on the ground as well. So we're actually able to operate there. We've got a team of uh, Korean guys who continue to run the drill programs. Uh, it's obviously had some impact on us because we've had some expatriates that had to go back to their home countries. Uh, so we've, we've obviously experienced some impact, but we are able to operate quite effectively in country at the moment, which I think surprises quite a few people. They assume that the whole place is shut down, but it's actually not that bad. Yeah, I think this is the misconception we have um, with all these issues is that um, things still move, still work. Um, I know when we spoke a few weeks ago in Adelaide and uh, we're in a very different world today, uh, but I think yeah. going forward, there, there is um, bunkering down is probably not a bad thing. It's not a good thing, I should say. I think going forward, I think this thing would, when it, it turns, it will turn really fast and, and yeah. you know, it, it will favour those who are well prepared, I guess. Yeah, that's right. I, and I figure that there's actually um, a lot of uh, a good bang for buck by keeping the momentum going. So rather than shutting things down completely, uh, we're obviously drilling at the moment at one of our projects. In fact, we'll probably have two rigs shortly uh, at the Opsimpo. And there's a couple of other drill programs that we're developing up for the second half of the year and some new, some new discoveries. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're pretty active and we'll have some, you know, you know, reasonable news flow during the course of 2020. Notwithstanding, we're probably not doing as much as we would have done in a, in a normal world, uh, but uh, we're doing enough just to keep that momentum going and, in fact, probably a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, you're probably one of the very few lucky enough to have... Uh, on ground people that can do work um, so I think it's it's good it's good that you can actually create some news um, and you're, you're slower but you're not not doing anything which is I think that's right pretty good exactly yeah yeah no, that, that's right and, and so I think that's quite important and it's one of those interesting things actually because you know it was not that long ago people were sort of raising with me you know, the value of having my own Korean team, you know, organically developed up in the country. Uh, and, and, you know, it was perhaps questioned 12 months ago. Uh, but here we are, you know, the fully trained up Korean team is now operating, uh, you know, all our drilling programs uh, independently of the expatriates. And we're able to kind of monitor that obviously remotely. We look at, you know, drill core every day. We keep an eye on what's going on. You know, obviously provide guidance for the technical group in Korea. And, uh, you know, hats off to the group. They've obviously taken on board the training in the last 12 months and we are able to uh, really keep things moving along quite well. Yeah, it's funny. Um, when I had my chat with Rick Rule, I, I, I met I the comment that when I'm asking for advice, I, I like to see some grey hairs on people. Not because they're harder, it's just the fact that they've seen um, good ideas become bad and bad ideas become good. And, you know, I'm sure... W like you said, you know, weeks ago, people may have been questioning um, strategies, but some of those would be the opposite now in, in, in this. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you do have to be quite nimble. And, and look, the, the view I take is that, you know, when, when we develop up a Korean team, we're really playing the long game as well. So, you know, clearly we're going to be able to develop an ability to operate there ultimately uh, with a very light foreign footprint. And so, you know, we'll, we'll only have a few, you know, a few foreigners involved in the team. They're obviously very highly qualified guys. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we're going to have a Korean team operating in Korea and, uh, you know, and, and it has a uh, look and feel of a local team, if you will. And I think that's, that's quite important, particularly with your interactions with the local people and things like that. You know, obviously, a lot of my career I've spent offshore in different locations from South America to Southeast Asia. And I've seen, seen a lot of examples where that sort of thing is not managed very well. And... Uh, it can sometimes end in tears. So you need to play the long game a little bit with some of this stuff, particularly when you're in an offshore environment where the uh, social interactions are quite sensitive. Yeah, I think also, you know, it's good to see that you guys completed your raising, um, although, you know, not, not according to plan A, but it's a still <laughs> raising. I mean, in, 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 in the greatest of times, that kind of raising of four million is still very strong, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, look, I think that did surprise a few people. Uh, and it was unfortunate that we weren't able to complete the $10 million raising. Uh, but you know what? Look, I, at, at the end of the day, I wanted to be on the front foot, make sure that I controlled uh, how that whole thing unfolded. And, uh, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, you know, the, the markets were an extraordinary situation. It wasn't like your normal trading period. Uh, and so the fact that the $10 million raising wasn't able to be completed is probably not... Um, you know, completely surprising to most market participants. But what we were able to do is to really extract from it the, the spirit of the original agreement with Metal Tiger, obviously the institutional investor that has come in and, and has got, a, you know, obviously a very high conviction investor. And that has really, I think, illustrated the quality of the opportunity because we're still able to, even in the worst of markets, raise $4 million, which I think is not a bad effort. I think that's an understatement, Simon. Uh, <laughs> in the group market was an understatement if you said it was not a bad effort in, in <laughs> current market situation. Four million is a uh, <laughs> peculiar <laughs> kind of effort, you know? Uh, <laughs> yes, no, well, thanks for that, Nola. And uh, look, you know, and we, we like to highlight the fact, actually, that we've got some very good major shareholders who are obviously right behind the company, uh, we had a good broker behind us and, and obviously Metal Tiger pro providing another element to that, to, you know, to that puzzle, if you will. So, um, and, I, and I think a key thing or a key sort of takeaway from that, Noel, is that Metal Tiger, they, they went on to site and did due diligence and they've seen the rocks and they've had a closer look at the opportunity that we have in Korea. And Terry Grammer, who's the geologist who will be joining our board shortly from that group, he's obviously had a good look at what we're, what we're uncovering in Korea. And it, it is amazing what we're, what we're discovering there. So the story is we're at a very early stage of what is a really big unfolding story. Uh, for those who are very technically savvy, they can see this story unfolding now. And they're the high conviction investors at the moment. It might take us a little while before the broader market sees what, what's going on here in Korea, but we like to think that we're onto something, something that's actually quite globally unique at the moment, which is a newly evolving epithermal field. Yeah, I think the, the I mean, at the end of the day, the market sees a four million as a vote of confidence. And I think um, when we spoke, I was, um, I mean, I, I like, I like, the, I like the, what you guys are doing. It's new, you had 10 million in, well, you had 10 million in the bank, um, sure things are going to be not as fast as if you just said um, but I think in, in, in three months six months you know that the slow and steady is Mark is not anticipating too much anyway you, you've got stuff happening I think it's you've got a it's, it's a good story you know it's, it's a good good um, situation that you're in fortunately yeah yeah no, absolutely and we, we're definitely able to build on what we've started in the last sort of 12 to 18 months and, and, and look you know uh, it would be great to have multiple field teams out there at the moment because it's just after winter. Uh, all, the, uh, all the land is cleared from the snow, so it's a brilliant time to be out there mapping at the moment. And so, yes, that, that has disrupted some of our field programs. 
Um, but, you know, we've got away with it reasonably well in the grand scheme of things, and we will be able to uh, get some really important drilling done, particularly up the Opsimpo, where we're drilling two different targets at the moment. Yeah. Well, look, Jarman, thanks for giving me time. I think it's... Um, it's I just want to get them some news going through. I think it's um, all eyes on 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 these kind of things and get some good news and 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 not hear all the uh, news that's abundantly clear to us for the last few days. And then, that's right. <laughs> you know, switch, switch off. The, that's right. Switch off the ABC radio and stop listening to bad COVID stories. I think that's the thing. This is wall to wall negativity. <laughs> It's amazing if you have one day without um, watching those news, you sort of wonder, yeah, you know, what's going on in this world? And then you turn it back on and you're instantly back on track again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's just, let's just hope that what Australia has managed to do in terms of its preventative steps is enough to kind of, uh, what's the word, avoid the worst of it, if you will, and uh, we can get through to the other side of the curve and, and look, I'm not suggesting that we'll be back to normal very quickly, but uh, let's hope that it's only a matter of a few months rather than six months or 12 months, which you know, clearly would be very, very disruptive if, if it was indeed in that case. Yeah, I think, I think you know, if we, if we look at the, um, the underlying message that we're getting, maybe, you know, we may not be affected as badly as everybody else. It's great to yeah. be in Ireland in, at this time of... of um, the world situation, it's easier for us to control things. Um, yeah. But anyway, you know, many, many more Zoom meetings to come. That's right. <laughs> Zoom's going to do very well out of this, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, so much uh, coffee with Samsa in your nice little uh, boutique pub in Adelaide. Yeah, we have to wait. We'll have to do that next time. Yeah. All right, Simon. Get out, get out. Simon? No worries, mate. All right. Thanks for the chat. No worries.